27 migrants were killed after their dinghy capsized while they were attempting to cross the English Channel from France to Britain. This is the worst disaster involving migrants to occur in the waters separating the two countries. British and French officials have already started trading blame for the incident. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said he was shocked by the deaths and called on France to do more to stop people from making the dangerous crossing. Of course, we have to work uh, with our French friends, with our, with our European partners. And I, I say to uh, our partners uh, across the channel, now is the time for us all uh, to step up, uh, to work together, to do everything uh, we can to break these gangs who are literally getting away with murder. Britain has in past weeks accused the French authorities of standing by while thousands of migrants leave their shores. France rejects the allegations. President Emmanuel Macron immediately called on Britain to stop politicizing the issue for domestic gain and said that France will not let the channel become a graveyard. French Interior Minister Gérald Darmanin put the blame solely on human smugglers and said that four smugglers connected to this particular crossing have been arrested. The premier responsable of this ignoble situation are the passers, that is, the criminals qui, pour quelques milliers d'euros, organise des traites d'êtres humains d'Irak, d'Afghanistan, d'Afrique, d'Asie, et qui ensuite utilisent ces personnes, les font venir en Belgique, aux Pays-Bas, en France surtout, pour traverser la Manche et pour aller en Grande-Bretagne. C'est ces passeurs qu'il nous faut combattre. Plus de 1500 ont été interpellés, arrêtés depuis le 1er janvier, et quatre passeurs aujourd'hui dont nous soupçonnons qu'ils peuvent être directement en lien avec ce passage de cette embarcation de fortune ont été arrêtés. Donc... The English Channel is one of the world's busiest shipping lanes and currents are strong. Crossings are attempted between Calais and Dover since that's where the channel is narrowest. At just 30 kilometers, human traffickers typically overload the dinghies, which are basically flimsy inflatable boats, and leave the migrants at the mercy of the channel. French police have prevented more crossings in 2021 than in previous years, but they have only managed to partially stop the flow of migrants wanting to reach Britain. According to France, over 31,000 people have attempted to reach Britain this year, and nearly 8,000 people have been rescued at sea. According to British authorities, over 25,000 people have arrived illegally in 2021, already triple the amount recorded last year. Migrant crossings have become one of the many reasons of tensions between Paris and London. Well, for more on this, correspondent Laura Markin Isherwood joins us live from London. Laura, thank you very much for joining us. Experts argue that the bloc is failing to unify because of political disagreements. Where does the EU really stand on this matter? Well, this is obviously a problematic issue made even more difficult, of course, since the UK left the European Union. It means that there have to be uh, ongoing discussions between the United Kingdom's government and the EU, as well as those uh, extra discussions, of course, between France and the United Kingdom as well. We know now that Boris Johnson wants uh, to step up patrols and work alongside France now in trying to work out a way to sort this out. He says that there needs to be extra measures, extra legislation put in place now to make sure that nothing like this can happen again. He does place a lot of the blame with traffickers, though, with smugglers. These are the people that are obviously working uh, with migrants, taking their money and offering them a boat that is obviously, as you say, uh, overweighted with extra people than the actual uh, vessel can really, truly hold safely, and then sending them out, obviously, into one of the biggest shipping lanes in the world. Now, that stretch of coastline around France is absolutely huge. It's a lot for police to uh, to manage. And we know that French authorities say that actually yesterday they stopped more than 600 migrants uh, getting into the water. But obviously the extent of this crisis is huge. Those figures that we're hearing about the number of people trying to cross is also extensive and it's a difficult one for anyone to manage. In terms of the EU, uh, we know that there are some 
blocks in place, of course, with uh, the officials around the French coast trying to stop them. But ultimately, this is a difficult situation between the United Kingdom and France and trying to work out a way to come together and manage this more effectively. Laura, there are more deaths reported as migrants try to cross the English uh, Channel. A blame game has emerged between Britain and uh, France over the issue. But ultimately, who should ha or take responsibility over this matter? That is the big question. That's one that governments can't really agree on. There's been a bit of a finger pointing situation happening. But even French ministers now and politicians are saying that this can't be a place uh, for pointing fingers of blame, that actually both nations, the UK and France, have to work together to try to make sure nothing like this happens again. We know that this is one of the biggest tragedies to take place in the channel. 27 people have confirmed to have died. Two more, we believe, are in hospital. There have been some survivors. Uh, reported to be coming from Iraq uh, and other areas in the Middle East. And we also know that in the last hour or so, French police have arrested a fifth individual in connection with this situation. It is an ongoing crisis. It is an ongoing discussion that needs to take place between these two nations in order to try and find a way to try to stop this loss of life any further. Finally, there are fears that this crisis will be politicised by some countries. But what do the countries involved in this mess supposed to do and resolve this matter and avoid it from even blowing up in the future? Well, that again is a huge question. That's what politicians are trying to work out. We have hundreds of thousands of people that are trying to move across from the Middle East uh, into Europe and now obviously on towards the United Kingdom. But crossing that stretch of water in the Dover Strait is difficult, particularly now uh, in the winter here in the United Kingdom, where that water is very cold, where the seas are very rough, but still it is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. It is a dangerous journey and it illustrates the desperation that these people are going through, the uh, sort of uh, things that they're accepting to, to try to attempt in order to get a life elsewhere away from the countries that they have actually come from. And this needs to be uh, a joint operation then between countries across the uh, European continent uh, and also with the United Kingdom in order to try to come up with some sort of method to try to deal with that flow of people that doesn't look like it's going to stop. Laura, thank you very much for your insights and for talking to us today. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.